book out today about the last days of Jesus Christ. It is called Killing Jesus. Bill O'Reilly, host of the O'Reilly Factor, with us in studio. How you doing? I'm all right, Hammer. Big long day for you, you know, pushing this long. book. Yeah. I, I, congratulations. Thank you. It, it's a good book, and I will talk about that in a moment. Sure. But you know the drill here, right? Mm -hmm. Government shutdown. What's going to happen? I don't know what's going to happen, but this is why people hate politics, because they're all, they being both parties, are looking out for themselves and not the country. Here's what should happen, all right? Mm. They extend the funding for a month. They talk it over. Um, it's a mess. Obamacare is a mess. It's supposed to be implemented tomorrow. So when you have a mess, let's come back a little bit. So what I would do would be say, this is a fair compromise. Anybody who wants to sign up for the exchanges beginning tomorrow can. Mm -hmm. You sign up. Here's your plan. You can sign up. If you don't want to, you don't have to. We're going to give you a year um, to smooth things out. So it's an optional thing. Well, that that seems like an irrational thing. Right. I think Russia. House Republicans would agree with you. They would. But Democrats in the Senate well, this definitely is, do not. They want to get this thing going. Right, because they want to play politics. But I think if somebody kidnaps Harry Reid, ties him to a tree in uh, Nevada and way out in the desert, don't hurt him. Don't hurt him. Just tie him up so they can't hear him. I think the other Democrats would then say, okay, look, we got some problems. Let's iron the problems out, give people a year, and then we'll revisit it next year, and it'll be strong. If it's a success, people will want it. If people can save money and get a good doctor care, they're going to sign up, right? Let me ask you something. Do you understand how this law works? Yes, I understand you do. how it works. I am. Because, because I work in this around, business. I know you're a smart man. Much smarter than listen, you. Listen, I read you articles okay. every day, and that's, I'm still that's confused. Your problem. You read articles. All right, I actually talk to the doctors. Here's how it works. So what's going to happen? You sign up for your, uh, an exchange, an insurance exchange, okay? You've got a four levels of care, depending on your income. But here's what falls apart. You don't have to verify your income. <laughs> you don't have to verify, so you can lie. That's number one, fraud city. But anyway, you're supposed to sign up, and if you make a certain amount of money, you pay a certain amount, and an insurance, a private insurance company mm -hmm. picks it up. Aetna says we don't want any part of it, so they've already bailed out. More chaos, okay? And if you go below a certain amount of uh, salary, like 75000 the government gives you money to buy the plan, whatever plan you... So there, there are, But there are subsidies built into this thing? There's there subsidies are subsidies. Deductibles built into this thing? If you want thing? the best plan and you make 60000 the government will fill in up to a certain amount of money for you. So what it is is a huge entitlement for poor people, because they get free health care, government picks up 100%, and for people making 75 grand, they get a little bit of a supplement. That's what it is, Hammer. Okay. All right. Um, I don't even think it's that simple, but put, it that, is. To, put that to the side for now. This book uh, is going to be a huge success. And I think when people start reading it, I think the one thing that will surprise them is the amount of Roman history that you provided during that time, that era. Now, why did you think that was so important to understand this? You read the book, right? Yes, I did. Okay. Know. You have to contrast the message of Jesus to what was happening in Jesus' world to know why the people rallied around Jesus. Thousands of people were following him around. Why? Why? There's the miracle thing, and we get into that. But there's also, here are the Romans and the Jewish Sanhedrin stealing from the folks, stealing from them, taking, and they didn't, folks didn't have anything, but taxing them up to here, all right, because it was a corrupt society. And here comes Jesus saying, don't do that, and actually getting angry about it, turning over the tables in the temple, the so money he, changes. He, he was a threat. He was a subversive. And once Rome figured out that this guy could be a problem with our money supply, because it went, they stole from the folks, went to the Jewish Sanhedrin, they took their cut, went to Pilate, he took his cut, went to Tiberius and Rome, he took his cut. Once Jesus placed himself in there, and people were going, you know what, maybe we shouldn't pay all this tax, they had to get rid of him. Got it. Now listen, to you. I, I saw you last night in 60 Minutes, I saw you at the Today Show this morning, saw you with our folks, our colleagues on Fox and Friends too. You're taking heat from a lot of different sides because of the style in which you wrote this book. Jesus Christ walking through the Mount of Olives. There was actually a dialogue that you insert into the book. Jesus was hungry. He went looking for a fig on a tree. I mean, explain how the style of the dialogue you were able to arrive at, because none of that is documented anywhere. It's oral history, um, and it is documented in places. It's oral. Look, let me just give you one simple example. John, the Apostle John, okay? He was there. He was there for the whole deal, the whole ride. He wrote John the Gospel on the Greek island of Patmos. It's documented. He wrote it as an elderly man. 
That's an eyewitness account. And John didn't embellish very much. Luke and uh, Matthew did, but not John. So when you read John's gospel, he saw it happen. So you take what John writes and then you compare it to what the Roman records were, the Jewish records were, even Islam wrote about Jesus. Even their historians wrote about him. And so you put it all of the research to see how it stacks up against the oral history in the, of the uh, Gospels, and presto, you have... I got gotcha. you. And the Romans were brutal, too, and I think you point that in many ways. And a crucifixion was a type of intimidation. To well, just the people. cross on the cover of the book sends the message that this is a history book. That is the cross that Jesus was crucified on, not the small t that you see in the church, because that stem of the cross was in the Golgotha, in the ground. That was permanent. Yeah. And then they just put the top, they lowered it down, you see the ropes there. Now just that sends the message that we're not fooling around in this book. This is what happened to Jesus. If you want to know, you read the book. If you don't want to know, fine with me. Listen, good luck with it. I know you don't need right, my luck. You're going to do terrific with it, as we Thank saw you. with Lincoln and Kennedy and now this. Thank you. Nice to see you, Bill. All right. Martha. All right. Thanks, Bill. So the legal